embryologically, um, these come from, from different times during um, the development of the embryo. And I have to say it's beautiful at the time of surgery when you can see exactly how um, development went awry. I think that's one of the prettiest parts of neurosurgery when you, when you see that um, at the time of surgery. If there's an abnormality with the notochord, you can have caudal regression syndrome syndromes where the bottom, remember that the conus, right? The tip of the cord, and S2 and below come from the caudal cell mass. I'm sure that you remember that. We know that diabetic mothers, mothers that are um, type one diabetics, for whatever reason, have an increased risk of their babies having caudal regression, where there's an abnormality in the development of that caudal cell mass. And I just saw a couple of these kids in clinic today. When you look at the imaging, it's like the spinal cord just ends bluntly, and you'll see where the sacrum and the tailbone um, did not form. And the tough thing with this is, right, that it just didn't form. And there's really nothing to do developmentally or, or surgically for these kids. They usually have very neurogenic, uh, poorly functioning bladders, and they can also have weakness in the legs. In my career, I've only seen one child with that has had sex segmental spinal dysgenesis where just in the middle of the thoracic cord, it didn't develop. And that can be devastating for a little child. From a notochord integration or abnormality, you can have that split cord malformation, um, which can also lead to different uh, cysts that you can see within the cord. Again, very uncommon. The primary neurulation defects, and remember that's the neural plate becoming the neural folds, becoming the neural tube. Um, abnormalities in the closure of the neural tube, you, a non-disjunction where it's just, it, it remains open is the myelomeningocele or the open spina bifida, uh, where the, the ectoderm and the neuroectoderm are attached is what we just talked about, the dermal sinus or the meningocele monche, and then premature disjunction where the neuroectoderm pulls away from the ectoderm a little too prematurely and allows the mesoderm to have access. And the mesoderm, of course, forms the lipoma, which can give you the lipomyelomeningocele. Abnormalities of secondary neurulation, again, um, is caudal cell mass can be the terminal myelocystocele, which is where the spinal cord comes down and ends in a large balloon, and is also the phylum comes from secondary neurulation, and so the fat in the phylum. We're not sure why or how kids end up with fat in their phylum, but we know that fat in the phylum can give tethering symptoms. Everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.